from our epistle text. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given in you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you are enriched in him in all speech and knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things that I do during the week is I come and I kneel here at the altar and I look at the crosses that we have here in our midst. And one of the things that I remember is that as, cross, as Christ hangs from the cross, I know that my sins are forgiven. Where we are convicted by the law and we look to Christ as the fulfillment of the law for the forgiveness of our sins. Each and every cross that we have is a great reminder of our sin. Of course, we have our crosses full and our tombs empty. We are reminded, of course, that we whose sins are forgiven, who believe in the Christ that was hanged from the cross, that we have faith. When we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ's death. I think Danny said it best this morning when he said that when we are baptized, our sins are left at the bottom of the font. How true that is. And I asked this morning, how many people have I baptized? And the answer is none. Jesus is the one who baptized. I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I have sinned. I've sinned against God, against you. And I know, however, when I kneel here and I look at the cross, I know that I have the forgiveness of sins. That's no small task. It's no small task to look at our sins, to be convicted of them. It's not an easy feeling. It's hard. In Deuteronomy, our text, we see the plea that we would circumcise the foreskin of our heart to no longer be stubborn. It's one of the hardest things that we have to do. And it's given to us to do. To circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of our heart so that we may not be stubborn. And the number one thing that's difficult that we are the most stubborn about is our own sin. When we look at ourselves, we are the most stubborn when it comes to our sin because it is the hardest law that we are to bear. And yet, confession has two parts. That we would have contrition, and that we would believe in Christ Jesus that our sins are truly forgiven. <clears throat> and since that is the case, we are given a task. The task is simply this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind. That is the law that's given unto us. We are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and with all our minds. And what does that mean? It means that we repent and that we have the forgiveness of sins. And I keep saying that on purpose. The forgiveness of sins. Because it is no small thing. In our sermon series, or our teaching of the sermon in Sunday school, I mentioned that two weeks ago. Why does the sermons often sound the same? Because the cross has to be in each and every one of them. The forgiveness of sins has to be in each and every one of them. Why? Because we know the law. Even as stubborn as we are, when we look to God, we see the, our sin. And when we see our sin, we have no other option than to, well, we have two options. To either hold the mirror up to us and see that we are sinners, or we become secure in our sin and we hold that sin in our hearts. 
And yet, the great commandment is given to us. When the Sadducees had been silenced, the Pharisees then came upon Jesus in order to trick him in his speech. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question. What is the greatest commandment? In other words, what shall we do? What can we do to keep the commandments? Not knowing that he was looking at the same Christ who would be the fulfillment of all the law. He looked, they did not know that they were looking at the Christ. And when Jesus said to them, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said the son of David. They did not know that they were looking at the son of David. Whose lineage would, be, would have the blood spilled for the forgiveness of our sins. And then Christ says this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Some call it the golden rule. I call it one of the two greatest commandments in which all the law and the prophets hang. If we do not love our neighbor as ourselves, we're stuck. We're stuck in a law, in a loop of a law of self-justification. Over and over and over again. We justify why we should not love our neighbors as ourselves. You've heard me say over and over that in our own minds it's a one camera picture show. We have our opinions, how we feel, and rarely do we look outside to other people's opinions. Even if we, even, even if we have that ability at all to look at someone else, be empathetic, be sympathetic, be lovers of the gospel and lovers of our neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Who then is my neighbor? Look around. Look here at this church. Love your neighbor here at Augustana Lutheran Church. They're so close to you. So close. Make it today. Why not make it today that we love our neighbor as ourselves? That we put ourselves second and say to others, I forgive you. I love you. I love you as myself. When we hear a sermon, we hear it and we move on. We move on quickly, too quickly. And perhaps in this sermon, I don't have the best eloquent speech. Probably isn't my best sermon. But I'll say this. Today, do not forget these words. As you leave, turn to your neighbor, even after the sermon. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. I forgive you. You are my Christian brothers and sisters. I love you. Why not make it today? Why prolong it? Why be bitter in our hearts when we could show the love of Christ to one another? When I kneel and I look at these crosses, again, I'm reminded of the law and I'm reminded of the forgiveness of sins. I say to myself those same words. Make it today that you go out and you forgive. Make it today that we make the sins of others as far as the east is from the west. Because when you love your neighbor as yourself, you are keeping the greatest law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And when that is true, Christ looks at us at our baptism and where He feeds us at the altar. And He says to each one of us, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant.
Make it today. Let's not wait. Show the love of Christ today. Love your neighbor as yourself. For on these two commandments depend all the law and all the prophets. Christ Jesus is the one who bridges that gap. And let us, for His sake, love one another as Christ loves us. Even to the point of giving up His life that we would have that same forgiveness of sins. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.